Hi guys. During last week's video, several of you commented that you'd like to see some uh, tutorials on RA4 printing, especially RA4 printing if you don't have a color head. So that's what we're going to teach you today. Now a lot of people think to do color prints that you actually need a color head, but you actually don't. Um, I had a very nice color head for a long time and it burned out and I ended up having to go back to a black and white head and I still do color prints just fine. But you are going to need a couple of specialized things. So the first thing that you're going to need is going to be color filters. I actually picked these up on eBay for about $5 and I have a lot of them and you're probably going to end up having a lot of them too. But there's a couple of things that you'll want to know before you buy them on eBay. They're going to come in three different colors. They're going to come in the complementary colors to the RGB color spectrum, which are going to be cyan, yellow, and magenta. But you actually don't need all three colors. In fact, it, there's some detriment to having all three colors. You're going to want primarily yellow and magenta. Now the kit that I got was a huge box of filters, so I ended up getting all three, but I very, very rarely use the cyan ones, and I'll tell you why. When you do color filtering with all three colors, you end up creating a neutral density filter instead of a color filter. So you are only able to filter using two of the colors. The other thing that you're going to need is going to be a daylight development tank. Unlike black and white printing, color printing is done entirely in the dark. You cannot use a safe light. You have to do it entirely in the dark, which makes it a little bit harder. But if you're used to doing black and white printing, the process is basically the same. So the third thing that you're probably going to want is going to be a gelatin filter holder. This one came along with my filters and a lot of times they will, but if you have to buy them separately, um, it's not hard to find them. This screws on to the bottom of my black and white head and allows me to take my filters and stick them in a filter holder and stick the filter holder in like that and basically turn my black and white head into a color head. So we're gonna show you how to do some printing here. So the first thing that you're gonna need obviously is color paper. And there's a few things that you need to know about it. First off, you do not use contrast filters like you would with a black and white print. You only use the color filters. So basically the contrast that your final negative is is about what it's gonna be in your final print. Second, the back of the box will show you your starting filtration point. We'll show you a picture here of what I use. It's Kodak Super Endura, and mine's a little bit older. It, I've had it for a really long time and I got it from an estate sale, so it's actually really old. But it's a good place to start. The other thing that you're going to need to know is that color paper is a lot faster than black and white paper. Where you might do a 15 second exposure with your enlarger with your pack black and white paper, the typical color paper is going to be only one or two seconds. In fact, the prints that I'm going to show you today, I will be printing at F16 at two seconds. So they're very, very fast. Also, I'm not going to be able to show you a lot of the process as I do it because it's done entirely in the dark. So I will show you basically a simulation of how I did it in the light, and then I'll go do the prints and show you what I did. So anyway, let's get started. Okay, before we get over to the enlarger, I'm going to show you something here. This is the box of Kodak Super Endura um, that I'm going to be shooting. And you can see right here, we have this little line here that says 0C plus 60M plus 45Y. Now that's an important thing to know. That is your filters. That is going to be basic filters for what you need to uh, start out with. That's telling me I have a zero cyan filter, so no cyan at all, 60 magenta, and 45 yellow. That's going to tell you that if you use those filters, you're going to be basically where you need to be to start out your exposure, and you can adjust from there. And I'll show you how you pick those filters here. Okay, this is one of my color compensation filters, and it might be a little hard to see there, but we're going to try. You see it says CC10M in the corner. That means color compensation 10 magenta. Now these filters are stackable, so when it said that I wanted 50 magenta, I could put five tens, or I could put 150, or I could put two 20s in a 10. It doesn't matter. It all adds up to 50 magenta. So what you do is you'll take your filters, and you'll take your filter holder here, and you'll stack your filters in there. And you can see I have both yellow and magenta filters in there. And this stack will be the stack that I use for printing. So let's move on to the next step. Okay, now we're over at my enlarger. And like I said, I'm gonna to have to simulate this because this process is done entirely in the dark. But you can see we have a color negative. This is a piece of Portra 100 that I shot a while ago. Um, and you stick it in your holder just like you would for a black and white print. And then we're going to load it up into the enlarger. We are gonna turn on our enlarger and we're gonna look at it down on the easel. 
just like we would for a black and white print. We're gonna focus it on the easel. And normally you could do this in the dark where it's a lot easier to see, um, but we're gonna do it here in the light. Okay, now one thing that's a little weird about my enlarger, my enlarger does not have a spot I could screw that holder on. So what I do for mine is I just hold my filters underneath it. And you can do it that way too, it works totally fine. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that our lens is stopped down to F16, because we're gonna be doing this F16 at two seconds. Now stop here and say that some color papers will have instructions in them with a different time, but F11 to F16 at two to three seconds is usually right about the right ballpark. So then I would load a piece of paper into my easel, again, entirely in the dark. I would hold my filters over the lens and I would do my exposure for two seconds and then my exposure is ready to go. Again, entirely in the dark, we're gonna take the paper off the easel we're going to put it in my daylight tank. I'm going to seal up the daylight tank. And at that point, we can go out back into the dark. Sorry, go out into the light. Okay, now that you have your print loaded up in your daylight tank, you can go ahead and develop it. Just use your regular RA4 kit for whatever the time your RA4 process suggests. It's usually about a minute and a half. A couple other things to note. Um, you can tray develop this, but you have to do it entirely in the dark. So if you don't have a daylight tank like I do, or you don't have one that's big enough to fit your piece of paper, that's totally an option as well. Another thing you can do, if you don't have RA4 chemistry, you can actually use C41 chemistry to develop your color paper as well. Um, the color cast will be a little bit on the cooler side, a little more blue, but you can absolutely compensate with, for that with the color filters. So that's an option you can explore as well. So now, since I have to do this process in the dark, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and make a print. And we're gonna be back in a couple of minutes after I've done that, and we'll discuss the color balance and uh, what you'd need to do to adjust it if the color's wrong. So we'll be back in a minute. Okay, I'm back. So this print didn't turn out great. In fact, I did a pretty bad job of washing it because I could tell it wasn't gonna turn out great after I uh, pulled it out of the tank. So it's a little bit mottled too, but it's very, very, very blue. So this gives us a chance to show you exactly how you deal with color compensation issues. I'm gonna show you a Venn diagram here. This Venn diagram shows you the primary colors, red, green, and blue, and their complementary colors in the bottom. Now you can see that the complementary color for blue is yellow. That means if I want to reduce the blue cast because I'm shooting a negative, I have to reduce the yellow filtration. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make another print, and we're gonna go from the 45 or so yellow that I've got right now down to, I think I'm gonna do 15 yellow this time, and we'll make another print, and we'll come back in just a second, and we'll show you how that one turned out. Okay, we're back from printing my second image. But before I show it to you, I wanna mention something else. In that Venn diagram I mentioned to reduce the blue, I could increase or decrease the yellow, the opposite color, uh, complementary on the Venn diagram. If you've gotten to the point where you can't reduce anymore, you can actually add other colors. For instance, if I had too much red, you can see, we'll show the Venn diagram again, you can see that magenta and yellow are both on the same side of the Venn diagram as red. So I can actually add more magenta and add more yellow to decrease the red. Basically you want to be, since this is a negative, you want to be opposite of uh, the color that you want to do. Anyway, here's our new print. You can see this one looks really nice. Uh, it looks much more correct. The colors here are about the same as the colors from a scan of the negative. Um, you can see that it is a little bit cream, not quite uh, white, but that's because my paper is really old. If you use a normal piece of uh, paper that hasn't uh, been sitting in a dark room for ages, this will come out white and that'll look great. Um, so anyway, there's a basic uh, intro to how to do RA4 color printing with just a black and white head. Um, this is just the touching the surface of what you can do with this process. Uh, printing is really complicated and is kind of something that is as much art as science. So you'll probably want to practice on this. Um, you can do things like doing uh, test strips like you would with black and white. And I really suggest you, uh, you learn how to do those because they can be a really good way to show you where your exposure is and to give you an idea how different filtration affects your prints. So I really strongly encourage you to experiment with this. Go get a box of uh, RA4 color paper and some chemistry and go play in the dark room for a day. You'll learn a ton about how this process works, how the different color filters affect your print, um, and really you'll get a better grasp on it than a simple uh, tutorial like this one. But this will give you the tools you need to get started and an idea on how things all work. 
Anyway, as always guys, I'm super happy to answer any questions you might have down in the comments. As always, thanks a ton for watching.